Welcome to another round of Prem and Proper. As promised, it is a look at the last weekend of matches before we headed into the international window and the World Cup in Qatar. So we will go backward before we kind of set you up for what's been going on. And there has been some news that has broken uh, in the midweek involving one of the top strikers in the league. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But let's go backward before we go forward and get you into all of the matches from the past weekend, and we'll get you into the standings too as we head toward uh, head toward the break, and then uh, everything's off till Boxing Day. So let's get into the weekend on the 12th and the 13th. Eight matches on the 12th, two on the 13th, your early start. Brentford in a shocker over Manchester City by the score of 2-1. Juice boxes going in was at a plus 18-12 for Brentford as they got the win. Leicester City, big three points, knocking off West Ham as a part of your 10 o'clock starts. That was a 2-0 win at a plus 270. Tottenham over Leeds in an absolute crazy one. 4-3 final, and uh, Tottenham gets full points at a minus 159. Nottingham Forest wins at City Ground over Crystal Palace by the score of 1-0 at a plus 233. Liverpool 3-1 over Southampton at a minus 370. Bournemouth home underdog at the Vitality, but they just smacked Everton around by the score of 3-0. Newcastle 1-0 winners over Chelsea. Arsenal stays on top in the Premier League at a minus 179, winning at Wolves by the score of 2-0. Your two games on Sunday, Aston Villa over Brighton by the score of 2-1 at a plus 400. Manchester United over Fulham by the score of 2-1 at a minus 114. So let's get you into the standings and lay the land as things stand. So it is uh, Arsenal. Top of the ladder now, five points clear of Manchester City. But the last five times that Arsenal has led heading into Boxing Day, they have not won the Premier League title. So 12-1-1, goal difference of plus 22, 37 points, five points clear of Manchester City. Newcastle's in third. They've won five in a row. They've also played 15 matches. They're at 30 points. Spurs at 29, having won two of their last three. Manchester United is fifth, 26 points. They have only lost once in their last five. Liverpool now up to six at 22 points, so there's a bit of a gap. Brighton at 21 points, ahead on goal difference ahead of Chelsea at the battle of seven and eight. Fulham at 19 points. They have lost two in a row. Chelsea, by the way, has lost three in a row to finish up the first part of the season here. Fulham's lost two in a row. They're at 19 points ahead of Brentford on goal difference in ninth and tenth. Crystal Palace is at minus three in goal difference. They had... A two-game win streak snapped with that loss there at 19 points in 11th. Villa with the win. They've won three of four, so they are now in 12th. Leicester, having won four of five, snapped out of their early season slump. They are in 13th at 17 points. Bournemouth snapped a four-game losing streak there at 16. Leeds had their two-game win streak snapped with the craziness in the seven-goal match with Spurs at 15 points. West Ham is at 14. They have lost four of five. Everton also at 14 points, goal difference of minus six. They've only won three of their first 15. They've lost their last two. Right now the relegation fight. Nottingham Forest at 13 points. They have gotten four points in their last uh, two matches. They've won two of their last four. Only one lost once in their last four. But they've still only scored 11 goals this season. They're in 18th, but only a point out. Southampton lost three in a row. They've uh, sacked Ralph Hassenhutl. We'll get to Nathan Jones in just a sec. And then Wolves at the bottom. They've introduced Julian Lopetegui as their new boss. They have lost four of five. Now, let's get you in and around the sound from the week that was. The uh, Sky Sports panel on Saturday morning posed the question, Jeff Stelling did, about Nathan Jones and uh, what the guys think, what the panel thinks about Nathan Jones coming from Luton Town to Southampton and what they think is going to happen by year's end. Do you see salvation in Nathan Jones or do you think that Southampton will be a championship side next season? I think Southampton are in big, big trouble. I said on the first day here, Jeff, Southampton are in big trouble and yes, they're spent, you're looking 60 million maybe plus. But look what they brought, there was no experience. The Premier League is relentless. You're talking top, top teams and Ralph Hasenhutl done a good job. I really, really believe that in, in just under the four years he, he's been there, keeping him in the Premier League. He's had challenges, got beat heavily, comes back. Now they made the decision. This for Nathan Jones, completely different kind of job for him. Luton, a team that overachieved last year, getting in the playoffs, missing out to Huddersfield in, in, the, in the semi-final, finishing 12th the year before. This is a different football club. Luton punch well above the weight in the championship. Year in, year out, well done, Nathan Jones. 
this is a different job. Southampton are in big, big trouble. I, uh, I but look, it's, it's, Nathan Jones, when you see him on the, on the touchline, he is a passionate manager and he will give everything. I've seen his press yeah, conference in midweek. No, you talk about wanting an opportunity what, what? to a big football club. He had it at Stoke, didn't quite go the, the way he wanted it to. That can happen. Goes back, was successful with Luton. What, what success getting in the playoffs? What is it? What, what is it? What, 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 what are they aiming for? Stay up. Survival. Well, How can't yeah, be any more, Moose? But why, why sack him? Exactly. At the moment, I mean, they're two points. They're two mm. points behind Everton. Two points behind West Ham. Two points behind Leicester. Three behind Villa. Yeah. I mean, you, you're talking yeah. big clubs like. Yeah. Mm. It's Perhaps. not like they're a cut adrift. But had he lost the dressing room, that's the thing. Well, that's, and that's, that's, if that's I'm Nathan like Jones, that. I'm worried because yeah. if them players no, are them players up, are surely are big enough to come out and say yeah. that about Ralph Hasenhutl, no chance. Speaking of Chelsea, it was uh, Paul Merson's turn to take uh, center stage once again. Uh, what what up with, what up with Graham Potter and Chelsea? So Merce was the lead on this one after two months on the job. Uh, Graham Potter's been there two months now. You know, I like him. I think he's a top manager. I really do. He doesn't know his best team, and it's two months. I mean, some you know he needs to sort that out. That's the most important thing is to to sort that out and get a settled team. I think he's trying to keep everybody happy. I think he's changing his team every week. He needs to get a settled team. You know, there's nothing worse. Keep on playing with someone else at the back or you're playing free up front. And what, it's just, for me, and they got well beat last week. Well beat. Forget the Man City game. Mm. Man City game, you know, it's a cup game. You know, that is, you should really name that cup after Man City, really, the way they do, how well they do in it. But for me, last week was a million miles off. One team absolutely knew what they were doing. They had a way of playing. They had everything right about them. And then you looked at another team who you thought, if anything's going to happen here, they're just going to fall over it. It's just going to happen. And we're going to go, oh, Chelsea have scored. I I was blown away last week. I couldn't believe it. Hmm. I mean, Tim, after that Arsenal game, again, you know, Graham came out and and said, look, they've been working together for three years or so. We are at the start of our process. That seems to be sort of the pet phrase these days, doesn't it? People talking about their process. Yeah, it's not, not normally a phrase what is associated with Chelsea um, because you don't have a process at Chelsea. You either win games or you get sacked. I'm not sure what the patients are, are like of the new ownership, but I'm sure they, they won't hang around. Um, well, you suspect if they spent £3 billion or whatever, one, they're going to want a pretty quick return on their money and they certainly are not going to want to see a team that doesn't qualify for the Champions absolutely. League. Absolutely. Merce nailed it. I mean, he's not knowing his best side and... No continuity in, in the line-up and, and the formations. And, you know, every supporter will go there and not really happy with what they're watching at the moment. I mean, resu- results haven't been that bad, but um, they've tailed off recently. But we're looking at De Zerbi, who's gone in there at, at Brighton. He's had less time than, uh, than Potter. And he seems to have got them playing. All right, they had a difficult start when he was getting used to them. But there's a, that's a process. You know, they're more progressive with their play. Um, all of a sudden, we're not looking out and saying, well, they need a striker to score goals because they're sharing the goals around the side. He's finding a solution to their problems. And I think that is what Graham needs to do. And unfortunately, when you're at a big club, you have to make big decisions. You have to leave out big name players. He needs to start doing that before he leaves the club. Mm. Christian Eriksen was asked by our friends at Sky about what uh, the vibe is like at Manchester United. He admits it's just different. When I was at Spurs, there's a talks back and forth, but in the end, it didn't uh, it didn't work out. Um, but was no. it close? Ever close? I don't remember. No, I not really ever close. No, I didn't at the time. I didn't want to go anyway, so it wasn't really close. But this time, I, I had a chance, and of course, I wanted to go, and that was different. And luckily, they they wanted to as well. When you say Manchester United is different, like the vibe is different, the how you say it is different. It's literally theme. two or three clubs, isn't there? I don't know, Real Madrid, Barcelona. Manchester United, maybe a couple of others, but there's something about just saying the name almost. Yeah, 100%, 100%. But that's also the thing from the club, how big it is. Like, it's just from, it's for everyone and how, uh, how many people following it, how much the media attention is, how everything is just bigger compared to the clubs I've been at before. So we mentioned Arsenal, and with their five-point lead, you've got Gabriel Jesus, who has been integral to their success in scoring the 33 goals that they have scored in the Premier League this year, second only to Manchester City in goals scored. But uh, over at Sky Sports, uh, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank isn't too high on Gabriel Jesus. I've always said about Jesus, it's a brilliant signing, but it's not a signing for 25 goals. 
He's not going to score 25 I think, though, goals. but have you noticed the last... I looked at his heat map. He's playing more on the wide. They yeah. mentioned about the overloads down the sides. Jesus is never really in the nine position, like no. centrally. He's always out on the flanks where they get those overloads. But the question is, is that do they need that someone centrally... You know, well, we'll get him the 25, but at the moment well, he's doing what's needed for the team and going into wider areas. At, at the moment, not. At the moment, they don't need it. But they're going to go later on in the season where you're going to have games where you're going to have only one chance, you know, and then you want your number nine to be a killer and, and put it away. And majority of the time, you know, you need a striker. Uh, and, and I'm not talking because I'm a striker, <laughs> but you need a striker that can score 25, 30 goals a season. Majority of, of the teams that win, win, win the league have got somebody that scores those double figures mm. and, uh, in the 20s uh, uh, goals. Yeah. More on Manchester United and the situation which has truly become untenable involving uh, CR37, Cristiano Ronaldo, and uh, Manchester United right now, especially with the bombshell interview that was given uh, on uh, Talk TV to an Arsenal fan. So uh, Melissa Reddy was asked about the situation involving Cristiano Ronaldo and where things could be heading, more or less, out the door. But what he's done is, if you think of United's best performance in recent seasons, it was against Tottenham. It was such a complete display. And the aftermath of that was all about Ronaldo, him leaving Old Trafford early, his frustration, him refusing to come on as a substitute. Now you have United, you know, going off to the World Cup with a massive victory, dramatic late winner by Ganacho, the new young talent, just such positive vibes. And then that quickly again taints and becomes the whole Ronaldo show. And now Portugal's World Cup campaign is also going to be dominated by his future. Ultimately, he's doing what he wants for himself, which is positioning himself for an exit to a Champions League club. What's the plan now then? Because, I mean, Eric Ten Hag won't be particularly happy about this. Cristiano Ronaldo has made it clear that he's not happy. What happens now? What's the plan? Well, United were in the market for a forward in the summer. They've known with or without Ronaldo, they need to forward plan. They need a long-term option to be their guarantee of goals. There is some difficulty because they were estimating that at least four top clubs would also be looking for a striker. But I do know that they have a short list. They were looking at Sesco, for example. They like Osserman. So United have been going through their options. Ultimately, though, how they handled this Ronaldo situation, I think they've got to be quite strong because they've sort of skirted and sidestepped and tried to show respect to him and his legend status at the club. And what we've seen from this interview is Ronaldo sort of showing that he's not happy that he's not being indulged anymore. That's why he's saying he's being forced out. If you can remember, United did everything to try and, you know, hold on to him, not for sale, try to make him happy. He had the armband just recently. Ten Hag, even when he has been disrespected by Ronaldo, has tried to be on the player's side, not sold him out in the press. Um, And yet you still have the situation where Ronaldo is looking out for Ronaldo. So United ultimately need to get rid of him in in the best way possible because I think... Ten Hag, you know, like I said, the preseason tour, how he's handled Ronaldo's disruption. He's done everything right so far. But as a club, United have still tried to not severe ties with him, whereas he's showing them now. He's putting them in a position basically to say this is endgame, this is final. He knows there's no way back for him at United, and it's now the club need to be quite strong in just ending that. As we mentioned, Wolves, they're at the bottom of the table. They've only scored eight goals in 15 matches so far. They've won two. They've only uh, won two of 15, two, four, and nine, ten points, lost four of five. And now Julian Lopetegui is now in charge at Wolves. Here's part of his introduction, courtesy of the team, their own selves. Uh, Good morning for everybody. And why not? I am here because uh, you are right. Uh, say, Say yes ago. I, I had the possibility to be here, and, but now I am here. I think it's the right moment. Uh, Wolves want me. I want to be here. 
I want to to be in the Premier League. I feel the 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 strength and the powerful in in this club. I feel that. I know that it's not the best situation, but we are going. Sure, we are sure that we are going to change all the situation. Working very hard in the next month. But of course, you ask why? Because I think that uh, Wolves. Uh, I believe in the uh, Wolves player. I believe in the in the Wolves club. Uh, in the executives, and I, I think that uh, all together we have, uh, we can uh, will a good future for for us. Biggest story of the season at Manchester City and in the Premier League is uh, Erling Haaland uh, on the mend, and so he was asked what he's going to end up doing on the World Cup break. Once again, courtesy from our friends at Sky Sports. First of all, when I wish I played the World Cup, of course, but that's reality now. I don't do, uh, but. Uh, First of all, I will relax my body and my mind a lot, uh, and then I will train. Uh, what I will train on, uh, nothing special, I think. Uh, it's been going quite well uh, my first months in City, so I don't need to do uh, so much uh, things or so many changes, to be honest. Uh, so, yeah, it's about uh, pre preparing myself for the next half of the season and um, be ready when uh, the next game kicks in after the break. And then the breaking news that uh, happened in the midweek has to do with Brentford and their leading score. Ivan Tony has uh, been charged with misconduct in relation to alleged breaches of the FA betting rules. Here's how the story broke on Sky Sports News. Breaking news. You will be aware that Ivan Tony has been assisting the FA over alleged gambling offences. Well, I can tell you now, the Brentford striker Ivan Tony has been charged by the FA with misconduct in relation to alleged breaches of the FA's betting rules. It's alleged that he breached the rules 232 times between the 25th of February 2017 and the 23rd of January 2021. He has until the 24th of November, which is next Thursday, to respond. Well, his club, Brentford, have responded and they've said this. Brentford has been informed that Ivan Tony has been charged with breaches of FA Rule E8. The club has been in discussion with Ivan and his legal representatives about this matter and those conversations will continue privately. We will make no further comment until the matter has been completed. So, Ivan Tony has been charged by the FA with alleged breaches of their betting rules. So once again, the four-letter paper, uh, as of about two weeks ago, claimed that Tony has been the subject of this ongoing investigation over alleged gambling offences but uh, until the F.A. charge, he was apparently helping out the investigation, uh, not charged with any offense, and now he finally has. Uh, once again, this relates to betting activity before he played for Brentford, and there are no suggestions he ever gambled against his own team. He came out on Twitter, meaning Ivan Tony, back on November 5th, said that he's aware of a story about himself in a national newspaper. He has been assisting the Football Association with their inquiries and would not be making any comment until such investigation has reached its conclusion. He's a proud Englishman, and it has always been his childhood dream to play for his country at a World Cup final. So that was uh, what he said. Uh, Ivan Tony, obviously not a part of the side that is in Qatar. And then Brentford came out with a statement back when all of this news started to, to come to the surface and uh, basically said two sentences. They note the story. The club wasn't commenting. They weren't commenting on the time. But the rules on betting in football, let's get into that for a second. Banned worldwide for all players, managers, coaches, club staff, directors, and licensed agents involved in the game within the Premier League, the EFL, the National League, the Women's Super League, Women's Championship, and the Northern, Southern, and Isthmian Leagues. Participants covered by the ban are prohibited from betting either directly or indirectly on any football match or competition that takes place anywhere in the world. The ban also includes betting on any other football-related matter, such as the transfer of players, managerial appointments, or team selection. The passing of inside information to someone that uses information for betting is also not allowed. Inside information is, you know, once again, information you're aware of due to your position in the game, not publicly available like injury, team selection news, that kind of stuff. You're not allowed, allowed to use inside information to place a bet or instruct someone else to do so on your behalf. And at the same time, you're not allowed to pass the information on to someone else so that they could use for betting. And so right now that we have 
the uh, Ivan Tony story. Alleged breaches of 232. He has until November 24th to respond to the charges, so it's a little more than a week. And uh, once again, it goes back to uh, all of that information that happened in, in early November and the two sentences that came out uh, after back on the 5th, but then Brentford came out with a longer statement after the, uh, the F.A. charge. And Brentford said they've been informed that Ivan Tony has been charged with breaches of F.A. Rule E8. The club has been in discussion with Ivan and his legal representatives about the matter in those conversations will continue privately. They'll make no further comment until the matter has been completed. Tony started his career at Northampton before he moved to Newcastle 2015, played on loan to Barnsley, Shrewsbury, Scunthorpe, and Wigan before joining Peterborough in 2018, moved to Brentford in 2020, where he's got 58 goals in 105 games. And so that is the up-to-date information on Ivan Tony as he has now been officially charged with the violations of FA Rule E8 when it comes to uh, betting on the sport. So we'll have more when it comes to Ivan Tony as we go. So that is your quick tour of everything going on in the Premier League. That is your last Prem and Proper until roughly Boxing Day. And we'll keep you posted on everything. Obviously, we will have World Cup updates on everything that's going on involving all your favorite players in and around the world. Those should come out daily. They'll be little quick hitters, and you'll be able to keep up with what's going on on a daily basis. So thanks for hanging out with us for another round of Prem and Proper. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy the games over in Qatar. Will be interesting. Prem and Proper returns around Boxing Day. 